Um, admittedly, I have no idea where we were. I can tell you a lot about the first two sessions because I've been recently editing the video. But. Well, last week we we re we uh, did some more characters and we found out that Robbie was still alive. Um, and then you started down the spiral steps and you came to a landing. There was a room off to the side and you fought some beast men in there because they were okay. you know, shaking the treasure chest. So does that leave us still in the room that was off the landing? Yeah. I mean, you searched the room, you got everything out of there, as far as I know, that you were supposed to get. Um, so, I assume you want to keep following the stairs downward? Yeah. Okay, sure. Well, it's either that or go back up the stairs. Mm. Or stay in the room. So, as you follow the steps downward, they descend into a long hall. Um, hold on. I'm going to have to draw this. The walls are decorated with very detailed tile mosaics showing foul ceremonies to horrific demons. Um, the walls are slick with condensation so it drains, you know, off the walls and, and you know, it tr slowly trickles down into that this pool. This is a pool here. Um, and the, uh, let's see here. And in the pool is brownish water with green slime on the top of it. You know how in the disc golf videos in the little ponds that they have there's oh, kind of yeah. that green slime? Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. So we should refill our water skins while we're here. <laughs> no. Gross. Um, what we saw in the bottom one is that those two warriors in the middle are standing victorious and sent all those other creatures running. And those other creatures appear to be from all sorts of different armies because they are all a different kind of animal, unless these are the, um, uh, it's the alternative theory that these could be those mutated beast men of which you spoke being sent out by these two warriors in the middle. Up at the top, it appears on the left that there is a man standing on a pedestal um, summoning a foul creature from the depths of whatever. And at the right, there is a foul creature who is holding the same scepter in the bottom picture, so it could be that guy on the right with the X on his face. Uh, looks like he's about to partake in a um, virginal sacrifice or whatever. So, how did we do? Yeah. Okay, so let's see here. So there's a pool in a long brownish pool in the middle of the, the room. It's wham. Uh, I assume the water's kind of smelly because it's got the algae growing on the green algae growing on top of it. Oh, and I forgot to tell you that there are hundreds of skulls floating on top of the algae and the slime. So it's a whole pool full of skulls and scummy water. Yeah. Skulls and a few That skulls. would be a good tavern name. Skulls and scummy water. Yeah. Skulls. And you notice... Oh, we notice. That... They're nice. Well, yeah, they're floating on the water, but you can kind of see there's something glowing. Ooh. It might be so. And so you kind of look closer at the ones that are on the edge of the pool because I seriously doubt you want to fall in there. But there are some on the edge and you notice that the sockets of the eyes, you know, are, uh, they glow. Of all of the skulls? No, just a few of them. Like 
Like 10, 20 of them. All right. Uh, I got this. I got this. We need something long to fish one of those skulls out with. Let's see. I'm thinking. Pitchforks. Yeah, a pitchfork might oh. actually do it. You could hook it in like the eye socket to the mouth or something and then gently yeah. lift it out. I'm seeing that he kind of lifts it up and brings it over gently like, like this, and then somebody else reaches out and pulls it up the head, end of the pitchfork. Who should reach out and grab the skull? One of your guys or one of my guys? I think one of my guys. Okay, which one? Uh, Robin. Okay, so he, he uses the pitchfork, he gets one, and like brings it over like this, and then Robbie, you said? Yeah. Reaches out and takes it off. We good so far? Yeah. Okay, and then we'll all have a look at this. Uh, we all kind of gather around and have a look at this skull with glowing eyes. So, as you're holding it in your hand, you're just kind of looking at it, but, you know, it's a very faint glow once you're holding it in your hand. And it's just very faint. And it, it looks like a human skull. So, um, there's not really a whole lot to it. It just looks like a skull, but his eyes kind of glow, but you don't really see anything in there that would be causing the glowing. Well. Is the jaw still intact? No. Um, Topher decides that he just wants to be sure, so he takes out his spear and fishes out another one of these, attempts to fish out another one of these skulls. But he fishes it out and manages to just pull the spear like this, and now he takes the skull in his hand, and he says, to be or not to be. <laughs> this one has a jaw on it. This one has a jawbone on it. Okay. So then he holds it up and does a little puppet show. <laughs> No. God. Um, so um, he goes like uh, he's, he's like got the the skull in his hand here, and he goes, "Hey, Scully, why did the guy throw the clock out the window?" And he says, "I don't know. Why did he?" Well, Glad I didn't have Draco out that time. Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> so. <clears throat> Who did I say? Topher. So Topher takes it off of the spear. <laughs> uh, he looks at it and he sees there is a glow in the eyes, right? Yeah. And it seems to be the exact same glow as the other one, right? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> and he looks into the eye sockets really close to see if he can even come up with a theory as to where the glow is coming from. You find nothing. Um, then I think that he says, yeah, this is just a waste of time. And he tosses it back into the pool with a splash. And that yucky water gets on everybody who's standing so, nearby. So you and they threw the splash. skull back oh. in? Yes. Okay. Great. With a splash. And now all that yucky water, they're all going, God, dude, would you please be careful? It's in my hair. Yeah, exactly. Alrighty. And upon casual inspection of, um, you know, as you're walking around looking at these mosaics, I'm there's little, there's a, there's little nooks in here, and you notice that there is. Um, oh yeah, hang on a sec. It's. Well, we need to take a break anyway. Okay. Dublin 1891 Green Apple Soda. Hmm. Oh, it's like a gator. It's like a uh, green, green apple, apple Jolly Rancher. Mm -hmm. A casual inspection of the chamber reveals that there are four notes uh, concealed in the corners of the hall. Okay. Then, yes, Topher, the yellow D4, um, he was the one that picked up the skull 
tossed it back in and splashed Robbie and um, Jack. Yeah. And um, and he said something like, this is a waste of time. He's being very pessimistic. So he um, squeezes past Robbie right there and decides to look into this nook over here. And you find a single hooded robe. And it's embroidered so that there's like something sewn on there. Uh, it's a... Uh, with a bizarre uh, emblem of the chaos beings sewn into to the you know on the front of the robe. Okay. And it's uh, it's stitched in silver thread. And, and the robes are mold eaten and rotten to the touch. Ugh. Hey guys, I found something over here. And uh, he says, hey guys, spread out. I found something in this nook. See if there's stuff in any of the others. So he is going to go to that nook. He is going to go to that nook. And he is going to go to that nook. And you find three more of the same hooded robes that are rotten <coughs> with the emblem of the chaos beings on them. And they might be helpful later. So, do you think there's a reason why we should go ahead and put these robes on now? Or do you think we should just bring them with us? I think we should just bring them with us. Okay, so these four guys are going to bring the robes along with them. We've got a rope maker, a woodcutter, a dwarf, and a blacksmith. Hank, the Dwarven Blacksmith, the Black D4. Okay, so here's what happens. Here's what happens. Topher finds this rope, and he says to the guys, Hey, I found something here. Go check those other nooks. And they all go into their nooks, and they're like, Hey, there's a robe in here, and it's got like some kind of special symbol on it. Uh, we should bring these with us. Oh, okay, yeah, good idea. Let's bring them with. And they all come walking out of the nooks. And when Hank, the dwarven blacksmith, walks out, he's actually wearing the robe, and it doesn't fit <laughs> very well. And it's causing the holes to get bigger because he's kind of big around. And uh, everybody, everybody, and yeah, so it's like dragging on the floor. And uh, when he walks, he kind of lifts it like a girl with a long skirt. And um, everybody looks at him, and Hank is like, what? And uh, they, the rest of them just kind of shake their heads. Nothing, Hank. You, you do you, dude. Okay, so I'm going to make a note that Hank is wearing his robe. He says he likes the way it makes him feel, and it's rather slimming. Oh, okay. So, do you want to investigate the room some more, or are you ready to move on? Well, uh, I think we're probably done here. Okay. So let's say we venture on through, which is this way, I assume. Mm -hmm. At the end of the hall are more stone steps running downward. And you end up on a dark sand beach. Oh, what? Huh. We are on a dark 